One of the largest misconceptions about Tesla ownership is that EVs have no maintenance at all. And while it is true that Teslas tend to require far less upkeep than a traditional gasoline vehicle, foregoing oil changes, for example, spark plug replacements, and also far fewer just moving parts that tend to wear out over time, well, they still have a handful of important maintenance items that every owner needs to stay on top of. So today I'm walking you through a complete Tesla maintenance guide covering what you should service, when to do it and a few easy things that you can do that will keep your Tesla running smoothly for years. And seriously, most Tesla owners have never heard of maintenance item 9, so stay tuned. All right, so you probably already know that your battery is pretty much the most important component of an electric vehicle, and keeping it healthy is actually quite straightforward once you know the basics. For daily driving, most Tesla batteries are going to be happiest with a state of charge anywhere between 20 to 80%. The only real exception is the LFP battery type. Those are designed to be charged up to 100% more frequently than NMC and NCA batteries, and in fact, Tesla even recommends charging LFPs up to 100% every week or so. Next, regardless of battery composition, try to avoid letting the battery itself drop extremely low in percentage on a regular basis. Hitting, you know, one or 2% once in a while on say a road trip is totally fine, but doing it often puts extra stress on the pack longer term. And the same goes for sitting at a high state of charge, 95 to 100% for long periods of time, unless you're heading out on a trip imminently. High states of charge when the battery pack is just sitting for extended periods is not good for the longevity of the cells. Temperature also plays a big role here. In cold weather, scheduled charging helps warm the battery before charging starts and also before you take off and whenever you're supercharging. So let the car precondition the pack so that you get proper charging speeds and reduce wear. This can be done by setting the supercharging charger as the destination in your navigation, and if the Tesla deems that it's required to heat or cool the battery for optimal charging performance, it will do it automatically. And by the way, if your displayed range up top on the screen ever seems off, you can try to do a quick one-time recalibration, charge close to full or all the way up to 100%, let the car sit for a couple of hours, and then go back to your normal routine. That helps the battery management system update its estimate of your battery real total capacity. Next, Teslas are famous for having brake pads that can last insanely long, often over 150,000 kilometers. And that is thanks to regenerative braking doing most of that heavy brake lifting. But that doesn't mean the brake system is going to still be 100% maintenance free. If you live somewhere with harsh winters and lots of road salts, basically anywhere in Canada like I do, Tesla recommends getting a yearly brake lubrication done, either at the service center or you can do this yourself as well. Even though regenerative braking means that your mechanical brakes aren't used very often, or at least not as often, well, they're still constantly exposed to salt, moisture, and grime from the road. And over time, that can cause the caliper pins to corrode and potentially even seize. And so once that happens, the repair becomes a lot more expensive than a simple preventative service. So overall, getting the brakes cleaned and lubricated once a year, especially before winter, helps avoid any of these issues. And of course, if you ever hear grinding, feel vibration in the wheel, or notice the car pulling to one side, that's your sign to get the brakes inspected right away. Tires are, without a question, the number one ongoing maintenance item for a Tesla, and really most cars in general, in fact, but especially with Teslas, because they're heavy, they have instant torque, and they're extremely sensitive to alignment issues, meaning bald tires come very quick. You should plan on rotating your tires roughly every six to 10,000 kilometers, or about every six months of driving. And doing just that can noticeably extend the tire life and help you avoid uneven tire tread wear 
error, which is super common for EVs. Now, tire alignment is also key. Teslas go out of alignment generally more easily than some other vehicles, especially if you hit a lot of potholes. So if you notice your steering wheel slightly off center ever, or your tires wearing unevenly, it's worth getting it checked out earlier than later. And tire pressure is something that you should stay on top of regularly as well that you can just check right on your screen. Most Teslas prefer being in the range of around 42 PSI, depending on which wheels and tires you have. Model 3, so it's around 42. Even being just a few PSI low can reduce your range and increase heat buildup in the tire. So proper inflation is honestly one of the easiest ways to improve both efficiency and extend tire life. Also, this goes kind of without saying, for winter climates, dedicated snow tires makes a massive difference. Not just in traction, but also in braking performance and the way the car handles cold temperatures overall. They're a must have in any snowy climate. And by the way, since we're talking about tire health here, I'll have a pretty exciting announcement in the new year about a Tesla related product that I've been working on behind the scenes for several months now. So I'm not going to announce the product just yet, but if you want early access and information and to support my channel by being one of the first to pick up this product, then please sign up for my email list. I will leave a link down below in this video's description. From here, your Tesla has cabin air filters, just like any other vehicle, and they should be replaced around every two years. If you live in a very dusty area or you drive a lot with the HVAC system pulling outside air in, switching them every year even can improve airflow and reduce odors from moisture and buildup on said filters. Newer Tesla models with HEPA filters or larger filtration systems have slightly different schedules, but either way, replace Placing the filters at the right time helps keep your HVAC system running efficiently and it's actually one of the easiest DIY jobs that you can do on your own vehicle. Tesla even has a simple DIY video that you can check out for each of the models and you can pick up HEPA filters with activated charcoal for very cheap over on my Amazon storefront. This next one is something almost no Tesla owner has ever heard of, being the desiccant bag that is inside the AC system. If you've never heard of this before, well, its job is to absorb moisture from the refrigerant loop. And once it is then saturated, moisture can cause corrosion inside the AC system. And that can become a pretty expensive repair if ignored. Now, this one is not a DIY maintenance item, but it's quick for Tesla service to replace and it's worth doing on schedule. So keep that one in mind. From here, it's pretty common knowledge that EVs don't use engine oil in the traditional sense, but they still have a few fluids that you should keep on your radar. For one, brake fluid needs to be tested roughly every two years or so and replaced if there's any sign of contamination. Additionally, the thermal coolant that regulates the battery and drive units is a long life fluid, yes, but Tesla still recommends having the system inspected every four years to ensure everything is working as it should. And of course, washer fluid is the simple one that you'll top up yourself whenever needed. Now, because Teslas are heavier than most vehicles in their class, the suspension components, things like control arm bushings, ball joints, and tie rods take on a lot more load. And over time, that extra weight can accelerate wear compared to what you might see on a lighter gasoline vehicle, for example. This is especially true for the older gen Model 3s and Model Y builds, which became somewhat notorious for developing a lot of rattles, clunks, and front and noises as the suspension aged. Some early components even saw service bulletins and recalls and many owners ended up needing control arm replacements or ball joints sooner than expected, including myself with my 2021 Model 3. For this reason though, you don't need to have the suspension inspected constantly or anything, but if you do start hearing clunks, rattles, feel vibration over bumps, or notice any changes in steering feel, of course it's worth getting it checked out sooner rather than later. Stepping inside the vehicle, it's a good idea to reboot the infotainment system every once in a while, every couple of months. So all you have to do here is just press and hold both scroll wheels until the screen restarts. It helps clear out minor software quirks, 
and keeps everything running smoothly. In fact, every maybe six months or so, there's a glitch in the system and I'll reboot it manually just to get that rebooted and sorted out. Make sure to also clean out your dash cam and sentry mode footage pretty regularly as well because the storage can fill up much faster than you'd expect. As for interior cleaning, avoid harsh solvents or alcohol-based products on the seats and trim. Tesla interiors hold up best with gentle cleaners and a microfiber cloth, which keeps everything looking clean without damaging the materials. Now, one thing many owners overlook is that the Tesla app actually already tells you what maintenance is coming up and needed. If you open the app and head to the service tab, you'll see a list of recommended items specific to your vehicle. Things like tire rotations, cabin air filter replacements, brake checks, and even simple reminders like changing out wiper blades. Tesla updates these recommendations automatically based on your model and the mileage. So taking a quick look every few months is an easy way to stay ahead of what your car might need. It's one of the simple ways to keep your maintenance on track without having to ever guess. And while we're talking about settings, might as well have your software stay up to date as frequently as possible as well as this is going to work out software bugs, different quirks and things that just need improvement with the vehicles, both from the actual battery management system to other aspects like software. So go ahead and toggle on the advanced software updates feature. This is going to get you up to date as quickly as possible once Tesla rolls out new over the air updates. As I mentioned earlier, if you wanna be up to date with the new product I'm gonna be launching in the new year, make sure to drop your email down below on the landing page, link down below in this video's description. And also if you wanna pick up any Tesla accessories to spec out your Tesla, check out my Amazon storefront filled with some great accessories I personally use and recommend. So thanks all for watching. Make sure to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.